Uh, I'm Josh. I'm Will. I'm Matt Morris. And we're going to talk about the riveting mathematics of ping pong. Well, first off, we'll begin with the history. Um, ping pong actually got its start towards the end of the 19th century. <laughs> Towards the end of the 19th century in uh, England, it was played by an upper class Victorian uh, family. They uh, turned their dining room table into a mini, to represent a mini, or a miniature uh, lawn tennis court. And uh, they used everyday objects, so their nets were just a pile of books, and they used, um, like, they used uh, cigarette boxes and parchment paper for their paddles, and then they
uh, 1.525 meters. Um, that's the size of the table, right? Yeah, that's the size of the table, excuse me. Um, and then that, of course, is the 15.25 uh, centimeters high to speed up the game a little bit more. Um, the size of the table <coughs> Physics is what you guys would be learning in uh, college physics or regular physics. It's classical mechanics as developed by Sir Isaac Newton. Uh, it is the set of, law, of physical laws that describe the motion of bodies and forces. So we're talking like force equals mass times acceleration. Newton's two laws of motion uh, basically the ball's parabolic path and it is uh, it's gravity and acceleration velocity. And then a little bit of Sir Isaac Newton. He was an English physicist and mathematician. He uh, published his book, which I have a tough time pronouncing, published in 1687. And in it, in it, it described his three laws of motion, which I will get to. Uh, we have the Magnus effect, which was developed by. Henrik Gustav Magnus, and in it, it describes how the spinning of a ball through an airflow causes the ball to go off its projected path or its principal flight, and so uh, it's important in sports, ball sports like baseball and ping pong and football, and the spinning of missiles and bullets. So snipers calculate the Magnus effect as it's traveling through the air. These are just two photos here explaining the forces of, for right here is the force of backspin on the ball. Backspin is when you uh, hit the ball like so to create lift throughout the ball, um, making it kind of seem to float and travel a, a longer distance. Um, what happens is uh, the amount of newtons pulled down on the ball is by gravity and the weight of its mass. Um, being pulled down, but the force of the spin is lifting the ball. Um, you guys studied vectors in physics. Um, the force of the spin is, well, is pushing the ball upwards, um, causing the ball to kind of follow this trajectory path of um, kind of lift the ball up while the uh, while the air pressure is. Uh, A little video describing the things. Thank you. 
one's just uh, <coughs> a top spin on the ball, um, whereas it's creating the exact opposite. Uh, there's more gravitational pull with that curve, and so it's dropping at a faster rate than um, if you were not to compute to make a flex negative momentum. Essentially just pushing the ball down. Heinrich Gustav Magnus was the German son of a wealthy merchant. He was born in Berlin um, and studied in the University of Berlin as a chemist um, and dedicated most of his studies toward that. He published 84 articles um, between chemistry and physics, um, but studied physics later in his life. Um, he also was known um, to bring the metric, standard metric system to Germany as kind of a representative of Prussia, um, that to kind of set the international standard of the metric system. Um, Bernoulli's principle, uh, the video ignored Bernoulli's principle, it's a really important part when you're talking about the airlift of the ball and um, how it reacts. Basically, Bernoulli's principle um, basically just states that velocity and um, pressure are inversely related. When there's high velocity, there's low amounts of pressure. When there's low velocity, there's high amounts of pressure. And when those two combine, it creates the uh, floating effect um, that is seen in the airlift of uh, an airplane, or uh, in this case, when the ping pong ball just uh, travel. Uh, Daniel Bernoulli, he was a uh, Swiss mathematician and physicist. Um, he also studied the kinetic theory of gases and thermodynamics. And Bernoulli's principle is strictly uh, uh, a derivative of the uh, conservation of energy, basically how velocity and pressure exist both with each other. The applications of Newtonian physics. So, Alright. So, so, the ball, obviously, due to Newton's law, mm -hmm. carries a parabolic path. Um, this is going to follow that parabola. Uh, when we don't employ too much spin on it or not enough spin to affect the ball in much way. And then according to Newton's third law, <laughs> Newton's third law, which states that every reaction has an equal opposite reaction, and in this case it's an unbalanced, unbalanced force against the, against the ball, seeing that I can push the ball back that way. And then, of course, the ball is always fighting gravity, so that's why it has to go on the path, so once it reaches its maximum, it falls back down. A little thing <coughs> on the magazine. Yeah, in fact, since we're not totally the best at ping pong, we're going to let some professionals do it. Yeah, you can more dramatically see the amount of curve that it can apply on the paddle to the ball. Um, and you can see how much it, it made a difference in ping pong. In the video, when you see him, when he's coming below the table and strikes the ball up, he's putting tops in. When they, when they, they call it a chop, when you chop at the ball, they're putting back spin on it. You can see the difference the accent they have for the ball. Why they're so able to manipulate that is because the ball only weighs 2.7 grams, so the magnet's force applied to that um, due to the high velocities is going to be much more seen rather than when you're uh, throwing something heavier like a baseball or um, or things like that. Another example, you like a wiffle ball, like when you hit a, 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 a baseball with a bat, you usually get just a straight line because of the mass when you hit a wiffle ball. It spins and it changes here. It has a lot more curve to it because of the mass and the hole that they put the ball in.
All right, so we have a little demonstration. Um, this is basically just explaining the effect of the magnet effect. We have something like a tennis ball. Um, this is obviously higher mass, um, heavier mass, so it's not going to display the magnet effect as much. And as we would assume, follows a parabolic path. Now with a 2.7 gram ping pong ball, um, it's going to cut a little bit more because it, we're putting spin on that, um, creating that effect. It drops a little bit sooner. Now when we have something like this, uh, this is just a regular sheet of paper uh, with a little bit of holes in it. Um, we still it's kind of expect it to drop that parallel or follow that parabolic path, but it cuts inward. Right, and the magnus effect is for spheres and cylinders. So whatever. So like the bullet just for it's rotating like this. And so that just goes to show that the magnus effect um, is definitely like a big the factor in any in any kind of thing. But we're going to as low as velocity as we are. Magnus forces more highlighted, more lower weight. Alright. And so this demonstration, we're demonstrating Bernoulli's principle of high right, velocity and low pressure. Um, so what I'm going to do is going to just hover the ball over here. Alright, now basically, oh I'll talk later I guess, so you can actually rotate it. Basically okay. what this is doing is you're creating a high pressure around the ball from the, from the uh, hair dryer. So what's happening is that, that pressure on the ball is actually overcoming gravity to a certain point and then that's when you see the ball drop. And at that certain point, there's a wizard ball right here, uh, and that's because of the the Newtons, the m mass times gravity is overcoming that uh, line of pressure. Uh, so basically, when we have it all the way up here, we have uh, the amount of Newtons that the ball weighs and gravity affecting on the ball, as well as uh, the moving pressure, that's low pressure built up right here. Um, and that non-moving pressure outside of the, uh, if you can imagine, kind of a cylinder, cylindrical, uh, piece of air is high pressure, non-moving air, and that's just keeping the ball where it's at in this little line of um, of air pressure, and that's uh, solely responsible for the air lift of the ball. Um, relates a lot with the magnet. <coughs> um, however, that is what keeps a ball in its um, trajectory or line of uh, parabolic. Any questions? Uh, basically, 
this one here, if you can see, it's really small. We couldn't get it much bigger. Um, is the tra trajectory of a ball, where it's, if you put bad spin, it's going to travel lower or further, it's going to float. Where it's just no spin, travels its uh, expected parabolic path. Um, and then top spin, obviously, makes it drop more because we're putting more pressure. So which is this? And so the middle graph would be the normal this spin. Would be, this, this would be no spin. That would be my head. Right? Yeah. yeah. And this is the same, this is the no spin. 